This murder is full of Shakespearean twists. You have a lead actor who's now starring in an offstage drama. Should I settle for less? Dan Wozniak is now suspect number one in the disappearance of Sam Hare and the murder of Julie Kibuishi. There's only one of me. A totally different persona than you see on stage where he's loved by the OC community theater crowd. He was every director's actor. I mean, he was there, on spot, committed, focused. Are you a Catholic? He's a decent actor. He's pretty good for Orange County Theater. You came here because I know you better than any other person. He had a lot of charisma on stage. He got cast in a lot of shows. The last days of a director's once glorious career. Dan was amazing. He had a very strong voice. Here's a place where I have never been. It lured you in to him. And here you are acting together, huh? You and yeah, Dan. this is arsenic, and this was one of the scenes. We did a pose. Dan was always a very gregarious and outgoing. He was just such a fun guy. Very likable, had that twinkle in his eye. He was the type of person that, you know, you saw them and they were such a life of the party. Dan's outward gregarious personality comes out in a 2009 YouTube video to promote a play. Hi, my name is Dan Wozniak. I'll be playing the role of John Davis in Orange Cat. <laughs> okay, take it again. Also on that videotape, Rachel Buffett. <laughs> she is Daniel Wozniak's co-star, both on the stage and off because they're engaged. And you will be my true love. Dan and Rachel, at least from our perception, were complete opposites in personality. He was very outgoing. Rachel was more standoffish, quiet. She always had a serious look on her face, and that came off rude. Rachel and Daniel Wozniak were both unemployed. He had a hard time keeping a job. He was a little bit lazy, um, and he had no real ambition other than this desire to be an actor. You're not doing community theater for the money, no. You're doing it to meet new people, new friends. He was two months behind on his rent. He was facing eviction. He was borrowing money from friends. I don't think we knew anything about money problems until he asked us to borrow money. <laughs> he just said, I was just wanted to know if you can lend us $500. It's a surprise for Rachel. You know, we're getting married and I have this photographer that she likes and I need it for a deposit. Money problems are a constant theme for Dan. He has no full-time job. He needs thousands to help finance his wedding and pay for an expensive honeymoon. He's even turning to strangers for cash. Chris Williams is a local jazz singer, and he's at a party that Daniel and Rachel are attending, and he overhears them talking about money problems. So being apparently a very nice guy, offers to give them a loan. And he ultimately loaned uh, Daniel and Rachel several thousand dollars so they can pay the rent, pay some bills. Dan has a little breathing room. The debt collectors are off his back. But now, the Costa Mesa police are on his tail. They know he's a central figure in a debit card scam involving a missing friend. Uh, we knew we had to talk to Dan and, and bring him in. They call Daniel Wozniak up. Wozniak says, I'm too busy to meet with you right now. I've got a bachelor party to go to. So they are up and down the beaches, nothing. It's a fishing expedition. And we see a restaurant with a big neon sign called Tsunamis, and we said, hey, let's go check over there. I walked around the bar area. I did not see him until I actually walked to the back of the restaurant, and Daniel Wozniak was smiling, laughing, drinking with his buddies. Daniel saw me, he turned white, and you could just see kind of the blood draining from his face. Police literally walk in and arrest him in the middle of his bachelor party. And as we walked out, said, you know, I'll tell you everything you want, want to know. I'm not going to protect him anymore. They take him down to the station at the Costa Mesa Police Department and begin interrogating him. Go ahead and have a seat. Yes, sir. I need, I need to start from the beginning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Daniel Wozniak had given us a statement that he and Sam Herr had a plan to withdraw funds from Sam's ATM and Sam would report his account stolen. Friday morning, I woke up and got 
nice call from Sam in the morning who said, how serious are you about this? And at the time I was looking for a little bit of money, so I said, pretty serious, it can't work. You know? So he's like, okay, what do we need to make it happen? It was a long night for Dan. He had to answer lots of questions. What were you doing with Sam Harris' ATM card? Why did you give it to this young man to take out money? And most importantly, where is Sam Hare? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Dan says he doesn't know where Sam is, but he does admit to detectives that he was able to convince that teenager to be a stooge at the ATM. He asked if it was illegal. I said, no, 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 don't worry. That was a lie to him, too. Okay. And these detectives are like, wait, why would he pay you to steal his own money? So you're getting money Friday. Right. Why is, why is he getting money Friday? Because that was the credit card front. That was the, the whole scam that we were talking about. It didn't sound true to me. It didn't ring true. When we continued to question him and press him, he kept changing little details about it. In the interrogation room, Dan tells detectives that the Saturday after the very first ATM withdrawal. He gets a knock on the door at 8.30 in the morning, and guess who's standing there? Sam Hare. Yeah. Open the door, it was Sam. Right. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? Everything good? And he's like, not good. I did something bad. What did you do? It's like, there's a, a body in my apartment. I shot somebody. I was not happy about it. It was a fit of rage. He just, without prompting, unloads this bombshell but Sam told him that there's a body in his apartment. Tell us the truth. You're not that good of an actor. I don't know what else you want me to say. And next thing you know, it takes a gigantic left-hand turn, and it becomes something that nobody could have imagined. <laughs>